Hey folks, uh, I just wanted to cut a video now that uh, I've had some time to think about Exile Con and all the reveals and stuff and what's coming to PoE uh, pretty soon here. And also talk a little bit about the channel and my plans for 3.9. Uh, as far as the channel updates go, you've noticed that I probably haven't, uh, I haven't really uploaded a lot of PoE content since uh, League Start for Blight. Uh, I kind of took a break from the game not very long after I uploaded my last League Start progression video. Um, I was feeling a little bit burnt out, partly because I played a hell of a lot of Path of Exile and Legion. Um, it was my first level 100 character, and it was all dumped into that one character, right? I put an absurd amount of time and currency into the Freezing Pulse Totems build. And, uh... I, Blight didn't really grab me um, because of that burnout, I think. And it just seemed like a good time for a break. Which is why you saw, like, you know, some Borderlands 3 content out there. Just sort of bouncing around between that and uh, played a little bit of Destiny 2 and stuff. Um, I think it was a good idea, though, because... A lot of stuff is coming to Path of Exile here with uh, Conquerors of the Atlas in 3.9. And uh, it's going to be a good time to really sink my teeth back into the game. Um, so, as far as build updates, I will be updating the Freezing Pulse Totem build guide for 3.9 for sure. Um, it's very likely to be my own league starter again. The thing about this league and this patch is it's landing in that time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And for me, and probably for a lot of you, that's one of the busiest times of the year. And between trying to stream it, and cut new videos, and um, update the guides and stuff, I'm not sure I'm going to have enough time to update the Holy Flame Totem Guide for 3.9. So this may be the league that I kind of retire that build. Um... I also kind of want to try making at least one or two new builds for 3.9 sometime after League Start. So I don't really like half-assing anything when it comes to, especially when it comes to guides and stuff, because uh, you know people rely on the information for their build too, and uh, I don't want to just try and rush update the Holy Flame Totem guide for 3.9 and then not have time to come back and sort of update it with all the new information that we learn after the league starts. So, you know, if I miraculously find the time to do that, we will. But my plan right now is to just um, focus on the Freezing Pulse Totem build and then maybe we'll see if we get into some the new Ballista stuff or maybe like, maybe we'll set up a Divine Ire Totem build because this is going to be a pretty boss kill focused league, I think. Um, I've also got a Discord set up. Somebody, uh, one of the viewers from my channel, set it up for us, and it's got like a bot that notifies people when I go online when I stream. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to jump in there. And uh, it's probably an easier way to get a hold of me if you need to ask questions about builds and stuff, or just chat with some of the other people in there. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. We'll be doing, uh, I'll still be streaming Path of Exile between now and, uh, the League launch. And we'll probably cut more videos for the reveals and stuff that they do between now and League start. And then obviously one big video for patch notes, which are going to be enormous. So that's going to take its own, its own video. I'll probably do that on stream. Um... But yeah, that's my plans for for right now. I'm going to be doing a lot more Path of Exile stuff again. Um, but as far as builds go, Freezing Pulse Totems is definitely going to be my focus. Um, as far as what got announced, the elephant in the room, obviously, is going to be Path of Exile 2, right? Um, I don't think I'm going to spend really any time talking about this in this video. Uh, not for lack of interest, right? This was definitely the star of ExileCon. We learned all kinds of stuff about what they're working on. It looked awesome. Uh, you know, there's all these new ascendancies, 
this huge update to the skill gem system. Um, I loved all this new item art, by the way. Something I think Path of Exile is not very good at. And this all looked such, such a huge improvement over what we have. The problem is, this is so far away right now, right? This time next year, we're still going to be talking about this game in a speculative form. So, getting too carried away on theory crafting about what we could do with this new skill gem system, the skill gem system might not even get to us in this form. These ascendancy classes are probably not set in stone. It's just too far away, you know. Uh, 2021 is is uh, when we're likely to be actually playing this game. So, as neat as it is, uh, I'm not really going to spend much time on it. Um, I did restream all of ExileCon, so if you want to check my Twitch VODs for sort of live commentary on what they revealed, you can do that. Or I'll put some links in the description to their own VODs, just of the raw ExileCon footage if you want to watch it for yourself. Um, it's very cool. I'm really excited about it, but there's a lot of big changes coming to the game that are relevant like right now, and that's more what I want to talk about. Um, particularly this. Conquers the Atlas, which is the next expansion for this game. And if you haven't been playing Path of Exile that long, it might be kind of confusing like what the difference is between an expansion and a league, but expansions typically only happen uh, once a year. And unlike leagues, they're just sort of by default changes to the core game. Um, so in 3.9... Let's watch the trailer really quick to get the setup for this. Listen carefully, for this is important. I worked with a group of exiles once, much like yourselves. Together, we faced a terrible evil that plagued the Atlas and threatened our world. Through great perseverance, we were able to defeat the Elder. But it wasn't enough. They kept going back. Over and over, again and again. There was something inside them that could never be satisfied. More power, more prestige. They sought to rule and conquer those strange lands. Each time they returned, I feared more and more what they were becoming. So I did what I thought was right. I sealed them in the Atlas. Forever. They found a way back. So yeah, that is the setup for the expansion. Basically, all of the endgame content is is moving forward from the the whole Shaper and Elder storyline. Um, so they talk about these five new endgame bosses, and these are essentially replacing both the Shaper and the Elder, right? They show here like uh, it's hard to say like which boss is which, you know. Presumably, they're not going to show us like the most important boss fight here. Um, I'm looking forward to this in the context just that I feel like they've really improved at making these mechanics heavy boss fights. So sort of 
replacing things like the Shaper and their Guardians, who are really old bosses in the context of the whole game, with some new updated ones. Uh, sounds pretty interesting, right? Here's another one with, you know, some... Obviously, you know, either you're supposed to stand here or you're not supposed to stand here. Presumably not, right? Um, it's kind of an interesting map layout, too. I wonder if this, like, elevated bit is just for show or if you actually have to, uh, you know, make your way up here somehow. But, uh, yeah, these things replace the Shaper and his Guardians. The Shaper and the Elder are gone, right? They've moved the story forward. So, as they mentioned here, right, the rules of the Atlas have changed. You now start in the center and only 50 maps are available. To unlock the rest, defeat the Conquerors and earn Watchstones that socket into the Atlas. Socket one of these Watchstones into a region of the Atlas to both level up the tier of maps in that region and reveal new maps. Eventually raise the level of the entire Atlas so that every map is between tiers 14 and 16. Customize your strategy by socketing and unsocketing these watchstones on the fly. So here is a picture of the entire new atlas. And as they mentioned, we're going to be starting out here um, where the old guardians were and working outward. Um, this atlas is fully upgraded, so everything is red tier. Um, and based on the blog post that they, they released the other day, um, the watchstones... The main watchstones you get for here are basically quest items. They're not tradable. You have to do the storyline to get access to these watchstones. And when you socket them, so basically the whole atlas is going to start out in white tier maps. And there's only going to be 50 maps visible at first. And the first watchstone you get, whatever region you socket them in, it's going to, it's hard to say exactly how that progression is going to work. Like on the one hand, it would be intuitive if every watchstone upgraded the all the maps in that region by three tiers so it'd like start it from one to three the first watchstone would up them all to four to six and then the second would be seven to ten and so on uh, but it might be like one watchstone upgrades them more than that and then one of the watchstones is just focused on revealing new maps uh adding new maps into the region basically either way um we also know that there are watchstones that are droppable that aren't just quest rewards, that they are tradable, and those special watchstones will probably have new properties that affect all the maps in that region. Um, whether those are permanent or whether they're more like um, consumables, kind of like League Stones um, or Sextants, where you'll socket it and for X amount of maps that you run in that region, it'll do something bonus. I, my guess is that this is going to be one of the ways that they try to introduce the League Stone mechanic that everybody liked from from that league. Um, the Legacy League or whatever it was, where you can get a Watchstone that'll add certain League modifiers to all the maps from past leagues. But I don't think they would want to do that in a way where it would be permanent. So it'd probably be like, it's probably tradable because you can socket it and use it X amount of times to add, you know, Nemesis or some other league to the maps. And then when it expires, you have to go back to a regular Watchstone. That's sort of my guess. Uh, we also know that Sextants uh, apply directly to these things and work on the entire region for that, for that Watchstone. You don't apply the Sextant directly to a map anymore, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm mostly just looking forward to this for this whole idea of being able to upgrade your entire atlas to the end game tier. And from that point, basically any map you dropped would have value, right? You're not going to have maps that you drop and you just can't run them because they're too low. Um, I'm going to skip this for now because what's important to understand too is these new item types are in in conjunction with the new atlas going to be responsible for a lot of build changes so since we know that shaper and the elder are basically gone um, they'll still be accessible supposedly through zana and then maybe some other means but whatever access we have to them is going to be extremely limited 
Um, so A, items like uh, the Watcher's Eye are going to be super rare. And we should no longer expect to be able to get those items reasonably, even in a trade league. It's going to be something that, if we do get access to, will be really expensive. But these new influence types are being added to the game related to these conquerors. And they've all got their own item pools, just like Shaper and Elder. We haven't seen much of these yet, except for these few examples. But they look pretty powerful, right? Like This one adds Tailwind if you've dealt a critical strike really, uh, recently, which is insane, right? Tailwind is an action speed increase, which is a basically a global improvement to DPS and movement. Um, this one has socketed spells, have plus three crit strike and plus one power charges. This is a hybrid item, by the way. This is a, um, they mentioned here, uh, using the power of Cirrus, Awakener of Worlds, you can fuse together any two influenced items to create a hybrid with mods from both of those items. So here they've taken one of the new influence types and fused it with a shaper base so that uh, you could roll mods from both of those pools. And here there's one with plus one to all cold skills and plus one to all dex skill gems. So some really powerful affixes in these new item pools. So there's a lot of questions about how, how early do we get access to these? We should assume that we no longer get early access to Shaper, right? Which is a big, a big change for basically every build. It's, uh, it's especially relevant to us though, right? If you're playing Freezing Pulse Totems or Holy Flame Totems or something, the plus one to maximum totems is currently on Shaper Shields. And it's a very low item level. So you were getting access to this plus one totem from shield really early on in progression. Basically, as soon as you got into maps, you had access to it. And that's no longer going to be the case. Whether that plus one to maximum totems stays on the shaper pool, or they move it to one of the new item influence types, or they move it into the passive tree maybe, or just regular rare mod pool, it's hard to say. Um, it seems like a dramatic change for them to just leave on the Shaper shields and then go from basically being trivial access to incredibly difficult access. Um, so I don't know if they'll do that. But there's a lot of questions here. Like how early do we get access to these new uh, item pools? They show these Exalted Orbs here, which are basically new forms of Exalted Orbs that will apply, just like a regular Exalted Orb will add a mod to a rare, they'll choose from those specific new influence pools, right? These are obviously the names of the new influence types. Um, from what we learned at ExileCon, these, ex these Exalted Orbs don't apply the actual influence to the base item. So, you know how if you have like a Shaper base item and you scour it, it's still a Shaper item? So you can, you know, spam alterations and stuff. These Exalted Orbs won't actually make the base item influenced. They'll just add a mod from that pool. So if you like took a Crusader orb and slapped it on here and got a Crusader mod, and then you scoured it, assuming it wasn't already influenced like this, it would just go back to being a regular base item. So these will be expensive. I mean, they're already exalted orbs, and they only drop presumably either from the conquerors or from conquer influence maps. However, that works. But just being an exalted orb that's much rarer than an exalted orb is implies these will not be cheap, basically. And it kind of feels to me like a lot of these changes are them trying to reintroduce some of that really high-end crafting that came with Synthesis that a lot of hardcore players liked that was like way out of touch with the average player, like way out of reach. And so they're, I think they're trying to sort of come back and find some medium between high-end interesting crafting um, in a way that allows more casual players to interact with it in a more reasonable way than Synthesis. Uh, which makes me wonder if they do ever bring the Synthesizer back, what form it'll be. But between this section here and the Atlas changes accounts for such a massive amount of changes that we need to make to the build. And one of the reasons why I'm not sure I'm going to have time to update the Holy Flame Totem properly. I'm going to be spending so much time after the League launches trying to sort all this stuff out uh, the patch notes are not going to answer all these questions that we have. It's going to take time. 
And one thing they don't mention anywhere on this page is that there is a notable endgame difficulty increase coming with 3.9 as well, where they're going to be bumping up the life pools of everything in the endgame significantly. Um, if you've been playing anytime recently, you know that bosses like the Shaper, for example, or the Shaper's Guardians even, kind of get reamed, right? Like, they live for a handful of seconds every phase. Um, and then everything below them just gets creamed, right? Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of questions that we that we need to have answered. And we're not, just not going to be able to figure them out. Patch notes aren't going to help. Like, we're going to have to play the new league, get to endgame, start grinding the atlas, and start upgrading things. See what the the new map clear speed feels like. How See how fast we can get access to influence items and shaper items where it's plus one totems all this stuff has to be answered maybe we're maybe we don't even want shaper bases anymore maybe one of these new item influence pools is just a much better choice there's a lot of changes coming and on top of that you have these new support gems now these these support gems feel like a very end game power creep kind of thing and these are not something that you're going to have to worry about for a, quite a while i feel like these are going to come into play like level 90 plus at a minimum. But basically the new Conqueror bosses have a chance to drop these new support gems, which are just existing support gems, but upgraded, right? So as they say here, uh, these new gems are better versions of existing support gems, which at level one are more powerful than the level 20 versions of the ones they replace. So a level one added cold damage plus is already better than a level 20 added cold damage support. On top of that, uh, they typically get some kind of extra modifier when they're at max level. So this, this, was, this is the only max level gem they show here, um, but added cold damage plus gets plus one to level of supported cold skills uh, once you max it out. Now, from what they said at ExileCon, these plus support gems take a massive amount of experience to level up. I think they said between five and ten times the amount of experience of a normal level 20 support. So this is a really end game uh, level of power increase, but it is also relevant to a lot of us, right? Like if we can get access to it and you have the time and the investment, it's pretty clear that something like added cold damage plus is going to want to make its way into a freezing pulse pillar build. So another area where we're going to have to do a lot of investigation um, they said there's around 35 of these support gems, so we could have more opportunities, right? Added cold plus is going to make its way in. It's going to have to either replace in power four again, or increase crit strikes. But increased crit strikes might have increased crit strikes plus. So, or God forbid, there's an empower plus, right? So we need to see all the gems, see how easy they are to acquire, how expensive they are, and. Uh, just another way that our builds are going to have to change in this uh, expansion. There's also these two sections, like there's a bow rework, uh, just like there was like a melee rework in 3.7. In 3.9, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be for bows and ranged attack totems. I'm not going to touch on this for too long because A, I don't really care about bow skills in this game. Um, I don't think you're ever going to catch me playing a regular bow build in Path of Exile. Um, I may work up something for ranged attack totems, um, but this is something that I'm not even going to think about until I see patch notes, and even then it's probably something that I'll think about mid-league at the earliest. I don't see myself league starting with a skill like this, where it's going to take a significantly different passive skill tree path and a lot of thinking on itemization at a time when itemization is changing wildly. So. If you're into experimentation, this seems like a a pretty interesting way to go. But when I look at these two support, like these two new skill gems, basically range attack totems are being replaced by ballista support, and that's sort of nothing much changes there. It's just basically a new graphic and working with these new ballista specific mechanics. Um, they've also created a, an artillery ballista and a shrapnel ballista. Kind of like how Holy Flame Totem exists separate from Spell Totem, right? They're just dedicated totem gems. Um, this one seemed like a fire version of Glacial Cascade, in a way. Uh, but it's a totem and it constantly spams this skill from afar. Uh, looking at the numbers on this tooltip, I wasn't like blown away by what I'm looking at. You know, when you have a 38% 
added damage effectiveness and then also a 50% attack speed uh, penalty. It's hard to imagine. I mean, it's it's not hard to imagine that this works out into a build, I guess. But it's not something where I looked at it and I think like, holy shit, this is going to be busted, right? It's not like when I first saw all the minion changes in 3.8. That was one of those cases where it was like, oh, that's obviously busted and that's going to be the thing you should play. I remember having that discussion in the patch notes video for 3.8 or just reading the patch notes and stuff. It was like, oh yeah, that's the busted thing. I don't, this doesn't jump out to me as the next busted thing. But uh, who knows, right? Um, if I do any other builds, I feel like this is the first one I'm going to explore in 3.9 after I sort of get my fill of my typical uh, spell totem start. Uh, and then obviously with every expansion, they like adding new items and stuff. There will be items from the League mechanic. We'll talk about League in a second. And then obviously some core expansion items that are just permanently being added to the game. Um... I didn't see anything here that like jumped out to me as something I immediately would have to add to my builds. The shield is like a definitely a non-factor for anything I play. This was kind of interesting. This one Chris talked about specifically at Exile Con. It's basically a glove with a few bonuses on it, but the main thrust of it is that it can be corrupted up to five times. So if your item doesn't brick, you can keep corrupting it. Um, and you're kind of gambling on how many corruptions are you willing to risk before this item bricks. Um, and it can have up to five. And if you could, if you actually hit that, like having five corruptions on a glove would be nuts. So this will be a fun gambly kind of item. Um, I'm interested to see what people do with that. Uh, some new div cards as usual. A Bottled Faith div card and a Skin of the Lords div card. I think I saw a div card somewhere else that was a a div card for a helmet enchant from Eternal Labyrinth, which should help get more hell, uh, lab enchants into the market and trade league. And I guess help Soul Stealth out at the same time. Um, some leather belt improving, uh, allowing you to stack multiple offerings, but again, I don't really fuck with minion builds and stuff. So yeah, a lot of changes are coming to the core game in 3.9 that uh, I'm really looking forward to. The endgame difficulty increase on top of all of these big overhauls to endgame uh, are really going to bring me back for quite a while, I think. We should also take a look at the new league. I guess we can look at the uh, the trailer for this while we're here. Take a clean knife and cut a sample of flesh. Repeat, four times. Mix the five samples in aquaformatic solution. Heat. Stand back. The intrinsic darkness will make itself known. Observe its anger, its aggression. Observe its changing form. Never comfortable to stay in one shape for long. It will try to kill you. Best not let it. Plunge the clean knife repeatedly. Hmm. Try more heat. More! Perfect. Only every living creature to go. So yeah, this league is coming the same day as Conquers the Atlas on the 13th. And the thrust of it, it seems like a pretty simple league, right? I think they intentionally want a little bit narrower league scope since it's coming alongside this massive uh, expansion. And the thrust of it is basically, as they mentioned right here, like build your own boss, right? And the idea is uh, introducing, you know, nude tanes, new NPC who's doing, you know, something story-related that I probably don't care about. Um, and the idea will be that as you're going through each zone, you can collect, like, guts and stuff from all of the enemies in that zone. And each component of an enemy will apply an attack from that enemy 
to your little Frankenstein creation. And once you have five of them, you can create uh, the boss and fight it for rewards. And uh, obviously each different attack gives it different bonuses. Um, and as you saw in the video, it basically changes shape depending on what attack it's using. And it's very sudden, right? So it's going to be hard to read the enemy and know exactly what it's doing and react to it. Um, and the end game idea of that would basically be taking pieces of map bosses and end game bosses and fusing them together, right? So you've got a here's a Malachi uh, doing his little. This guy's screwed because this is basically hitting him right in the face. Um, his massive, you know, Shaper Slam esque attack, you know, and then turning into Vault Oversoul immediately with his next attack, and then turning into Hydra, right? Like they basically just change shape. And rotate through the different attacks you give them um so it's really a, it's really a boss killing league right there's nothing in the league mechanic where you're you're dealing with additional monsters right if you think about most league mechanics legion breach delve everything incursion they're all about mostly about adding monsters to a map um and this one's not really adding any monsters at all. You're just picking up these pieces from the monsters that already exist, either the monsters on the map or the map boss itself, and then you're creating a new boss out of them. And so, depending on how juicy the rewards are from this stuff, it probably will push people into single-target builds and boss-killing builds a little bit more, which is why uh, I was thinking about Divine Ire Totems. It's hard to say whether, because the only reward they mention for Metamorphosis is these catalysts, which are a new consumable that allow you to improve the quality of jewelry. This is the only item slot we've never been able to improve the quality of, because it didn't really have a base value. It's not like armor or weapons that have sort of some intrinsic uh, property. Um, jewelry just has implicits, so there was never really a reason for them to improve the quality of jewelry. And now they're giving it a reason, basically, where each of the little catalyst powders that can drop from the bosses improve a different type of quality, right? So this adds quality that enhances caster modifiers. And this one, in qual this quality increases life or meta modifiers. And so you can see here, this one is a max quality with like buffed up cast speed and spell damage because of the caster modifier quality. So, while it'll be powerful, it looks like here there's, what, five, seven? It's hard to say if there... I don't think there's any behind the tooltip for that. So they're showing at least seven types of quality you can add to jewelry. Um, I mean, it sounds powerful, but I don't know if it's going to be as relevant as all the new items and stuff that are coming in Conquers of the Atlas. So I don't know if it's going to make as much sense to like make your league start build to be good at the league, maybe as you would have done for Blight or Legion, instead of making a more generalized build because you've got a lot of new endgame goals to tackle, and they're going to be between you know mapping and bossing equally. But um, it still looks pretty neat, and I like the idea. I especially like that... um. It seems very uh, streamlined, right? It's not going to be one of those things where you have to pop a breach and stand there and kill a bunch of monsters or pop a monolith and run around and break everything out, wait for it to pop out, kill everything again, loot all the stuff immediately. Everything's going to be sort of just picking up a few monster guts on the way and then popping a boss whenever you're ready and you feel like it. Um, and it sounds like you'll be able to collect uh, all these these map boss pieces so you can just sort of collect map boss guts for a while and then when you're ready you can go to this location wherever this is because all the all the boss fights have been in this one arena so i'm assuming you have to go like you go to the menagerie or something or you go to the delve uh, area you're gonna have to go into his area to summon the boss versions of these the like the, the end game versions so you should be able to do that on your own time right you can kind of run maps for a while and collect pieces and then sit down and, and smoke some bosses for a while. Seems pretty cool. But uh, definitely kind of a footnote to the main the main course here, which is going to be a big overhaul to the endgame of the Path of Exile.
I'm looking forward to it. Uh, like I said before, I'm still going to be streaming Path of Exile off and on between now and the new league. Um, I did say this is a busy time of the year for me, so my schedule on streaming is sort of a little bit uh, up in the air at times. Um, but I am, I am streaming quite a bit. I may be bouncing around a little bit between some other games too before the league starts. But uh, I'll put a link in the description to my Twitch channel if you want to stop by. And uh, as well as the Discord. And yeah, I think that's about it. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Um, be sure to hit all the YouTube buttons for subscribing and stuff. Since YouTube seems to really care about that. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.